Hi everyone! I'm Harmony and this is my channel Harmony Stitches. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for coming back to visit with me today. If you're new, welcome and I hope that I um, show you some projects that can give you some inspiration um, to either start crafting or renew your passion for the craft that you had once done before. So we're just going to go ahead and get started with this video. I'm just going to jump right in. Um, as my returning viewers, you know that I did have my lower wisdom teeth taken out on February 9th. Um, and then the following Sunday, I filmed and uploaded my video as normal. I was feeling good. Um, but then after that, things took a little turn for the worse. I did end up getting dry socket on my left side. And I was feeling miserable that whole entire week. Um, and I had to work in the office in the afternoons. So it, th the week was horrible. I touched no crafts whatsoever, no cross stitch, no knitting until Saturday. And I don't, I don't know what date that is. It was, um, not yesterday, um, the 27th of February, but the one before that. Um, and I, um, uh, my family wanted to go do something. So I went and I sent both of them, my husband and my daughter up to Mackinac city. They wanted to go see the blue ice. So I sent them up there and I sat home and rested. Um, cause it seemed as though the more talking I did, um, the more sore I became and then of course then the worst afternoon I had too. Um, so I sent them up and I watched YouTube and I watched some shows on the DVR that I needed to catch up on and I picked up my husband's hat that I was making. Um, it's called the Muscle Bird by um, Isolde Teague and I will link it below and I actually was able to finish it. Um, so this is his hat. And of course the colors are not gonna show up well because it is a blue, um, but it's very tonal, different colors. And with this pattern, you actually start in the center, you increase, you knit a long tube, you decrease all the way down, and it creates this, almost like a big sock tube. And then you just take one end, whatever end you want to, to be the inside, and it's kind of fiddly, you just kind of pull it in, like I said before when I was talking about this last time, kind of like fitting those corners of a fitted sheet inside of each other. And then you can fold the brim up or you can leave it down so it'll be slouchy or a folded brim. And he said, wow, this is going to be a warm hat. And he has not wore it yet, um, but I did wear it yesterday when we went out and about. And um, we went antiquing, which I'll talk about that later. And it was very warm. So he did let me borrow this yesterday. Um, I used, um, I have the tag. This is what I had left over. I had more left over than what I was anticipating. Um, about double. This is about 61.6 .6 yards. It's 14 grams. And it's Lolo did it. And this is her low original base. And it is... 85 extra fine superwash merino and 15% nylon, 100 yards, or 100 grams is 440 yards. So the pattern said that I should have used, if I got gauge, um, at the seven stitches to an inch, that I would use about 430 yards, and I used much less than that. Um, I don't really know why, but the hat fits, and that's all I care about. So um, there's that. Um, and then on this past Tuesday, on the 23rd of February, my husband was supposed to have a procedure at the hospital. And I thought, okay, I'm going, I have to be his driver. Um, what, what project can I take there? Cause I already had the hat done. So what project can I take that I can easily work on? It's not massive. I can um, move quickly because you're in the waiting room, then you go back into the prep room and then, and then you're waiting and then they bring him back for recovery and then you're leaving again. So um, it was, it's a quick procedure, but um, so I, I picked up um, my Let's Talk Autumn by Hands On Design. I had, this design comes with three, and this is a series. It comes with a big one, one to fit in a four inch hoop, and then one to make into a pillow. Of course, you can finish them however you'd like. I already had the big one done, and I actually have right here the hoop size. Um, so I had that one done already. And then I had started the medium size, the one that you would make into a pillow. And I had started it and now it's finished. So before I started um, 
this past week, pumpkin patch and this swirl, just the white, the ampersand in white and H and half of the A was done. And I did all the rest of it since Tuesday. My husband didn't even have his procedure, something, there was a glitch. Um, so he didn't have his procedure, but I was able to have the motivation to stitch on it. I was feeling better. So I was able to get back into things and I got that done last night. Um, I, I said, I cannot cast on because I wanted to cast on a hat for myself. I could not cast it on until I finished that. So this morning then, I cast on myself a hat, a Musselberg. Um, there is a stitch along going on with the Crazy Sock Lady in her Ravelry group. So if you want to stitch this, you have to go by the pattern. I'll link it below. And then um, you join the Ravelry group and then you have until April 15th to post your finished picture. So the more finished hats you make, then the more entries you get into the drawings that she's having. So that's why I am, even though it seems like in Michigan we're on the tail end of winter, I'm casting it on so that way I can get in another entry into the giveaway and it'll be ready for next winter. I won't have to rush in November or October to get it done. So this also is Lolo did it in um, the low original because that's what I signed up for in the Dumbledore, the quotable Dumbledore club. This one is called Muggle Magazine. Oh, and you can kind of see where it's kind of a white base, but then it just kind of has these like splashes or almost dustings of color. So it, it really doesn't pick up on your eye until you start knitting it up. Um, so I'll be excited to see what the colors look like as I knit the hat and then I'll be able to show you all too. I'm actually like, this is my second go around on this. It took me a couple of times to cast on, again, because it's a newer technique that I'm using. Um, it's called the pinhole cast on or the disappearing cast on. Um, so you start with a couple, um, a couple stitches in the center on a loop so that way you can pull it tight. And it's just finicky for me. I'm sure that if I were to make this hat or to do this technique multiple, multiple times, then I would get better at it. But I wasn't liking the way that it was looking, so I kept ripping it out. And then I was halfway done with the increases, and so it was about twice the size. And I didn't like the fabric. It was too loose and open, which is really odd because it's the same yarn and the same needles that I use for my husband's, but I really didn't like it. So I took it out, I went down on needle size, and so far I'm liking the fabric. I do have to adjust the pattern just a tad, but since she has the tables for you in the pattern, um, you can easily find where you need to go and what you need to do in order to have a hat that fits. So I am happy with that. So the next thing that we usually talk about during these videos is doing my wheel spin to see what cross stitch pattern I will be working on next. Um, unfortunately, I did not work on Little Halloween Quaker because I wasn't feeling well. That's okay, I did you know, hide the slice from my wheel so it won't show up in a spin again. But that's all right because I have several others that I have kitted up here that are that are started. And then also I have maybe 20 that I want to start and I'm going to start those two. Maybe once a week I'm going to start one and see how, the progress that I can get on both of those projects. Just because I bought all the floss, I have the fabric and the patterns and I want to get get some more going so that way I can beef up my wheel a little bit because since we've been together I've finished I think four projects now so um, I need to beef my wheel back up. So let's see I'm getting my app open here and we'll do the wheel spin. As you can see there's six six projects on here um, but one is missing which is the little Halloween Quaker because it won't show up. Get rid of that. Um, it won't show up on my spin on my wheel again until I don't know when. I don't know how it works exactly because I've never gotten to the end. So maybe if I hold, nope, gotta hold it on this side today. Um, okay, and we'll see what comes up. Not much to choose from. Okay, 12 days of Christmas. So that one is in this bag, I believe. And I showed this to you before. There has been no progress on it because it did not come up in my wheel. Um, and I, I have um, day one through eight completed. And then I already have a start on number nine. So 
I only have four blocks to do, but one's already halfway done, and they don't take that long. If I really buckle down, two to three days can get one block done. So I should get some pretty good progress on this. Um, this is the, um, I believe this is linen. This came in a box um, on a D-stash D -stash group. Um, a very generous person was giving away three boxes of fabric that her family, her mom or grandma or someone um, left behind and just for free. She said these three boxes are kind of equal and three winners each will get a box and I won and I got a box and it was just chock full of all kinds of great things and this was one of them and this is also the same fabric that I use for Mary's sampler too. Um, Mary's sampler number two. Um, and I like it okay, and it's easy to stitch on. Um, and I just thought it was kind of a, a really good color for this because of the, the colors of the floss pop. Um, so I'm using, the gray is Anchor 400. And that's because I had it in my stash and I didn't want to use black because I thought it would be too, too um, stark of a contrast between the fabric and the other flosses. Um, let's see here, the red is DMC 816, which is kind of a cranberry color. I don't know what the official color for it is. The green is 702. Oh, it almost matches my painting back there. And the gold is 729, which I was looking for some 729 for a couple of different projects and I couldn't find it. Didn't realize I had it in this bag. All right, so that will be my focus piece for this week. I have not touched Pandemic since um, the morning of my last video. I put three measly strands in that. So I am quite far behind, but I know that my motivation for that piece will come back. It just is gonna take time. Um, Cause like I said, I, I almost didn't stitch on anything um, knitting or cross stitch wise for almost two weeks. So, um, well about, about a week and a half. Um, so I know that slowly and slowly it will come back. So, all right. So I'm going to work on my muscle board hat. Maybe I'll put some stitches in pandemic and I will work on 12 days of Christmas. Oh, sorry. That is by Plum Street Sampler. It is a freebie by, um, sorry, Plum Street Samplers. You can find it on their blog. And what you do is on the right hand side, they have a menu. Scroll down to Sundra, Sunday Mystery Samplers, I think it's called, and you'll see it down there, Sunday Mystery Something. And you click on that, and then there's a bunch of posts. So what you're going to have to do is scroll through to find all of the posts. Um, I don't know if she has one big chart at the end. Um, yes, she does. So you'll have to find that last chart where she gives you the entire thing. Otherwise, you have one chart for each block, which sometimes I think is a little easier because I have trouble transitioning from page to page. So if you have one block per, um, or one page per block, then you'll be able to know, uh, see your stitches better because you don't have to keep flipping back and forth. And because it's a digital download from her website, then you have, I mean, you can print it, but I have mine on my device. So it was a little bit tricky. So you can do it either way. You can download, download them as individual charts or as a big hole. So I think I did both, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, and from my Let's Talk Autumn, look at all, it's messy, but look at all of this extra floss I have. And I kind of love that because this builds the stash and then you have extra floss to be able to do a floss toss for all of those freebie charts that you get. And you don't necessarily have to do a floss toss, but if you're on a budget and you need your dollars to stretch, that is a perfect way to do it. You buy a pattern, you buy the floss, and you have leftovers, and then more more likely than not, you're going to be able to use those colors in a different pattern. So that's just a tip. Okay, so I um, follow and watch every Saturday, Stitching with the Housewives. I enter the giveaways almost every single week, with the exception of this one, because if there's nothing that I particularly want to win, I don't enter the giveaway. But I won! So I actually won... This is NP NPI Silk Floss, and it's a five-pack. Um, Fat Quarter Shop has a club for NPI now. It started in January, and this actually is the January pack. It's Iris Blues, 
um, and they go by numbers, 561, 63, 65, 66, and 68. It goes from light to dark. So I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch with this, but I knew that I liked the colors and I wouldn't mind trying the silk. So I have that to add to my stash. Those are my first silks, so I'm excited. Um, and then I went shopping. And I know, I know. Those of you that have watched me from the beginning, you said, Harmony, you have a budget and you kind of already spent March's money. Well, come to find out, um, my husband, something happened with the money, which nothing major, um, but it caused my my spending for March to be paid back. So now I actually get my the money that I had spent prematurely, it got paid back. So now I get my March spending again. And I forgot that I had a couple dollars in my envelope left over still that was waiting for me. And Joann's had another sale on their floss. So I had to replace this. Remember this 608, this bright orange that was for a Christmas project? Not happening. So when I was there, I pulled the two greens off the shelf for that Christmas project. It is 860 and 904 are the greens. And then I went around and looked at reds and I said, well, what's going to match? And so I picked 498, which is called dark red. And it kind of, it's not the same color as the red that I have in 12 Days of Christmas, but it's really close. And I thought that it really matched these greens well. Um, I don't really have any white space to show. I hope you can see those well. So I did replace those four orange ones. Those will be saved for Halloween. And actually I found some freebie charts that uses a different shade of bright orange, um, a different number of DMC. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start using that. Um, but I do have, mm, I have uh, another Halloween sampler. You know, guys, if you really need free charts because of your budget, you can find them. Trust me, I have so many free charts. Um, it was a stitch along in a group on Facebook, and, it, and I think it's just called Halloween. Um, I will have to look and let you know. And there's an orange in there, but I don't know what number it is. So that might actually be good because then I can transfer that to that project and I won't have to buy any orange so we'll see yeah, oh you can always use orange especially if you like Halloween and then I got some more so and look another purple one I have no idea what charts I'm pulling purple for but it was on the list so I pulled it and I love this like sage green color so I have all of these so now I can probably do like I think I kitted up with the last shopping trip, 14 projects. And then I think this was another two or three. So I'm, even if I wanted to participate in a stitch mania type of event, I have enough floss patterns and fabric to do so. Um, and I mean, this cost me the $5 that I had left in my spending envelope. So it's not a big deal. But then yesterday, um, my husband, he he's a homebody, but also at the same time he gets bored really quickly and he wants to go do things. And that's one reason why I sent him off to Mackinac City last week, the weekend before. Um, so I said, well, we can always see if the antique center is open. And my daughter immediately said yes. She's like, yes. So um, after nap time, because we wake up really early, so um, we eat lunch and take a nap. Um, well, I, I fall asleep for like five minutes. My husband takes a little bit longer nap. My daughter doesn't nap during the daytime unless she's sick, but the dog napped too. <laughs> so we went to the antique center. It's about 45 minutes away. And I had two things that I wanted to find while I was there. Both of my family members were just like, hey, let's see what we find. But I had two things that I wanted to get. Liz Matthews has some charts that when you stitch them and finish them, they turn into these little tiny tree things and at first I was like, that's kind of weird, but then she released some and I am going to try my hardest to put a picture here so that way you can see what they look like. There's two of them. She released them at the same time. The color threads coordinate with each, with each other. So if you buy one skein of each, then you can stitch both. Um, but those trees use flower frogs and all of these are holes. So what my daughter found in her research and you see that there's a lip here. She Googled it really quickly while we were at the antique center. These sat on a bowl of some kind. 
probably glass and there's water in the bowl you used all of these holes to stick flowers and things to create a really beautiful and well-rounded and full bouquet of flowers a flower arrangement so I got two they're almost exactly the same in size and shape and everything but they were at two different vendor spots this one in this hand feels a little bit heavier than this one but they look identical they need to be washed of course if I'm going to have them as a decoration they need to be washed but I was super excited we were looking and looking and, and I told them my family what I was looking for but they had no idea what it was they didn't know what they looked like and then we found one and it was pink it was like um like it looked like it was etched and it was pink um, but the center was really large and I said that's kind of what I'm looking for but not quite with a large hole because you want to use a dowel um, that's small enough and in the center and you'll see when I post the photo um, if I can't post a photo I will link it below so that way at least you can go look at it if you want to um, so we kept looking and I found one for $17.50 and I'm like oh I kind of want to because I want to display these at the same in, during the same season and I can't afford to spend $17.50 on one and then if I find another one how much will it be and then I found three more in the same the way that this antique center is, is like um, people rent spaces and then they it's kind of like consignment so in this one booth there was like three of them they were two for ten dollars each and then one for twelve dollars and I'm still like, eh, okay, it's kind of, the price is coming down, but there's so much more to look at. Let's keep going. So we kept going and kept going. And then there was this booth that had several of these kind or different shapes, but then they had two with the glass bowls. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's really exciting. I don't need the glass bowls, but it was really exciting to see like as a whole, what the item was supposed to look like. So that was really exciting. But of course, because they were whole, you know, both pieces intact, they were a little pricey so I didn't get those and for my purposes I don't need the bowl so um, I found one um, in the booth next to that I think for three dollars and then the booth across the aisle there was one for two dollars so I got super ecstatic and we weren't even done yet so I got these I did find another one while we were there and it was kind of like a orange um, it almost looked metallic where it kind of shimmered and I don't really know the words for those kinds of things but um it was really small it was like this big around and it was this tall and it was orange and it kind of shimmered and I thought that was kind of neat but I had already found these two and um, one of the staff members actually saw me carrying them she's like I'll put those in the hold shelf for you so I was super excited that I found one of the items that I was going for the other one I'm not, I'm not going to say out loud in case I can't, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in case I can't ever find it. So it might be a long shot. <clears throat> oh, I got something in my throat. Um, well, but at that point, I think that's it for this week. Um, we talked about <laughs> my absence last week. I just couldn't make a video and my finishes. I got two. So my recovery ended up pretty well because I was able to do two finishes. Um, I got a new cast on and I'm going to start on 12 Days of Christmas. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to plow away at um, block number nine. I showed you um, the little pickups that I had and my giveaway winnings from Stitching with the Housewives. And I think that's it for this week. And um, hopefully you found something to inspire you to get going on your projects. If not then maybe next week, you never know. Cause like I said, I was off for a week and even though I felt bad about it, there, oh well, that that is life and say la vie as my grandma always used to say to me. And you know, it, it is what it is. So um, hopefully next week I will have some more to show you. And if you have any questions about anything that I showed you today, go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you're working on so that way we can spur each other on, encourage each other, encourage each other to finish these projects so that way we can move on to um, new shiny ones coming up. All right, have a great week. See you soon.